Have you ever stopped to wonder what makes 3D characters move? Of course not. They're CG. What do you mean move? What are you talking about? It should be a simple task to make characters do backflips, grab a glass of water, or do a dance. Not so. In fact, character meshes move via virtual skeletons that sit inside the mesh and move it around the way real bones would. We're going to make a skeleton today, but before we begin, let's go over a few key terms. Rig. A rig and a skeleton are sort of the same thing. For now, you just need to know that if I say rig, I could just be referring to the skeleton. I could also be referring to the situation of the skeleton and what controls we have over it. They're different from a control rig, which is another topic for another day. When you hear rig in this tutorial, think skeleton. Skeleton rig, rig, skeleton. Skinning. Skinning is the process of creating the influence a skeleton has over the mesh by creating weight painting on the mesh. So what's weight painting? The bones that move the mesh have a variable amount of influence over different regions. Weight paints are a visual way of representing what gets moved. Unlike other kinds of painting in Blender, they're not texture based. The weights are assigned by vertex and we can edit them directly. Vertex groups. These are what the weight paints are stored in. We're gonna be going back over these a lot. So how does rigging work? In Blender, a character is rigged when it has three things. A skeleton with bone set as the object parent, an armature modifier, vertex groups named with the name of each bone, weight painting set up per bone in the appropriate vertex groups. Now, if that's the case, this sounds difficult to set up, but Blender will actually do most of this work for us. This video is part of a course on making CG avatars and using them live in Unreal Engine. We're going to create a skeleton from scratch in this tutorial that we will be able to use for our avatar. If you just want to learn how to create a general use skeleton, we'll begin our approach in the next chapter. Before we begin, I want to do a little housekeeping on where the series is going. If you're keeping track, in the last video we created a base mesh that we could use to create smaller details on our characters later in an upcoming tutorial. Kind of feels like we should be doing a little bit more modeling and texturing first, right? Well, maybe. In my time making CG characters, I've discovered two different workflows. I'm not sure if these are standards, but they're what has worked for me. In the first, we create our character, modeling it thoroughly, creating different mesh parts and clothing before texturing it nicely to a T before we go about the process of putting the rig together. We generate the skeleton and skin the rig with an add-on auto rigging tool that works like a plugin in Blender. Easy, an auto rigger can save a ton of time. My favorite tool for this is called Auto Rig Pro for Blender. It can set up bones and handle skinning with only a little bit of input from us. You'll still need to fix weird little weight painting problems later in the process. You can get it on Blender Market for just a little bit of cash. In the second method, we create our base mesh first, and then we create a simple skeleton rig right away by hand from scratch. We skin the rig, and then as we continue to model the character, we'll already have our basic data from our rig applied to the different mesh parts that we need to create. If we were to go ahead and create the entire character mesh and all its parts, we could still rig it, but Blender's default tools would be insufficient to give us good results when we weight paint automatically. We're going to be doing the second method in this video. While the first method is a lot easier, not everyone wants to buy the tools for the first method. I want this course to be free for anyone who would want to go about creating an avatar or VTuber. So why not use Rigify? What about Rigify? Blender comes with a set of tools designed for easy skeleton creation. The problem is that most of the bone rotations are set up in a way that Unreal really doesn't like. You could try it, but I found it better to avoid using Rigify and my Unreal workflows. Remember, this course is about learning how to rig. We're just focused on the basics today, but in the future, we'll talk about physics bones and how to set them up in Unreal. Scene scale. First, we need to set our scene scale to 1 100th of a unit. I forgot to do this on stream and ended up getting really confused when I tried to map out a control rig later on. So I'm gonna press Shift A to make a new thing, and then we're gonna grab an armature. We're gonna start, and this is gonna be our pelvis bone. I'm gonna call this pelvis. Now you'll notice immediately that I'm losing my bone and I can't see it anymore. So Blender has a feature for this. If we go to the armature panel here and we go to the viewport display, we can turn on in front, which will let us see everything like an x-ray. In fact, this feature used to be called x-ray and then they changed it for some reason. Uh, we can edit bones the same way we do with meshes. 
If it looks strange that I'm suddenly just moving and resizing things, this video references a previous one I made about Blender Basics. If you haven't seen it, you should go back and watch that video as it explains a lot of the basic controls that we'll use for how to move everything around. So I can select either side of the bone or I can select the middle to move everything. I'm gonna select the top though, and I'm gonna press G and I'm gonna move it down on the Z axis. So now I've got my first bone here and you can see it moves with me. Now we don't have to look at our bones in this specific shape, in this little chess piece looking thing here. We can display as all sorts of things. So octahedral is actually what I prefer. I tend to use this most of the time, but you can do stick, you can do B bone, you can do wire, you can do whatever suits you, so long as you understand that this won't change anything other than just being a display. So if I go up to the top here in armature, I have a bone. It's important to name these correctly. So we're gonna call this pelvis. Ideally, you want all your bones to have names and you want to write them in immediately after creating them. The bone names can be what you like so long as you keep them organized. The bones are going to follow us into Unreal and be visible at all points in time. So try to name them nicely. Unreal, as a general rule, really likes when we use underscores instead of spaces. So let's adhere to that too. The bones are only going to work with our mirror tools so long as they share the same name with the corresponding underscore L and underscore R for the left and right bone each. So you got that? Make all the lefts underscore L and all the rights underscore R. So we can press E to extrude a new bone just like we could if we were using a mesh, which makes things really easy. So I'm gonna call this next one spine and then I'm gonna pull it up again. At this point, we have a couple of different spine bones. Now it's, it's kind of up to you and different rigs have different amounts of spines. The human spine has, is a column of vertebrae, which is just a, an enormous amount of movable bones. Now you don't need all of those bones to be able to communicate the same kind of change in CG. So I would say anywhere from two to four is fine, but you don't want to overdo it because it will just make things more complicated later. So you can see here, I'm resizing these and I'm going to just create a third spine. And I am going to go back and rename things. Blender has a really good renaming tool, but let's just try and get things right the first time. At this point in the video, I'm going to stop showing every single time I stop to name a bone. If you want to see all my bone names, hang out till the end of the video where I have an overview of all of it. So at this point, we want to create branching paths with our arms. That's going to get a little tricky because we're going to want everything to match perfectly. So if you see this little button here and we have that turned on, this is going to be really important. This little X axis mirroring mode press E again, you'll notice that we just made another bone. However, we need to make two bones. So if you press shift E and you drag, then you have two of them. You can click on one and then you can move it with G. However, we need to break something on the bone first. So we can see that the bone is connected and we want to change that. So go ahead and disconnect the bone. Make sure the other one is disconnected as well. Do that before you move it. Oh my goodness. And now suddenly we have clavicles or shoulder bones. My mom broke her clavicle when she was a little kid and never healed right. That's how I learned about clavicles. And we extrude. Then suddenly we have both sides with us. And that is how we get our forearm. So once again, you can see that placement's really important. When we look at it, when we look back up here, we can see this is not correct. So we need to move our arms back. So upper arms. So I was kind of lucky on the draw on this one. You can see that my uh, bone came pretty much into a good place with the wrist. Let's talk about hands for a second. Hands can be really difficult as there are a lot of moving parts. Ultimately, I don't prefer auto rigging tools for hands as I feel that Blender actually does a pretty good job of doing them right off the bat. Now they're mirrored again. 
We can do this again and we can create a wrist bone. So I'm gonna say my wrist is right about here. Metacarpals. You're gonna want one for every finger that isn't the thumb. They're going to be holding space in the weight painting so that nothing deforms inappropriately. You're never going to deform the metacarpal bones, but it's really important to name them appropriately. So I'm gonna just click on my wrist bone here and I'm gonna press Shift D, which will create another bone here. You can see it's doing the same thing on the other side. Now let's also make sure that our hierarchy is correct because we want this to look proper. So if I go into post mode, I can change how things look. I can see that this is not rotating properly. It's supposed to rotate the bone as well. So I need to fix this. So if I go back into edit mode, we can see here that we have a problem. We have a lower arm L as a parent. Now, yeah, you can see that also in the hierarchy here because we have these two lower arms. That's not actually what we want. We want to nest this bone inside this bone. So I'm going to change the parent here to lower arm L001. Now this works differently than it, when extruding than when it does when we do a duplication like we just did. Duplication will create siblings and extrusion will create children. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create the basic system for which we will utilize fingers. Let's make one more down here at this level. It'll be the base of our thumb. Now this bone will actually move a lot more. This is where we can really speed things up. If we select all of these, we can start to create our finger bones just like that. Do that once, twice, three times. Now I've made this short to stay up with the pinky. I'm gonna box select all of these and I'm gonna drag them down a little bit because they don't look like they're sort of set up correctly. Really important to keep using your numpad keys here so that you can keep flipping through your views to make sure things look correct. So if I press seven back up top, you can see that things are not as I'd like them to be. Keep pressing E to extrude. Now the thumb, I believe has less bones than the fingers. The finger has like three sections of bones. The thumb has sort of like three sections of bones too, but it's like one that's in the hand, sort of like that's in the palm. And then there's another one here. And then there's another that does the thumb tip. So let's get this correctly placed first and then we'll move it. So it's exactly correct. Once again, you'll notice that pressing E key, is not gonna do what you want. You have to press shift E to be able to split everything on both sides. And in this situation, they're, they're not connected to anything for whatever reason, which actually doesn't help us in terms of our hierarchy. So we do want this, these connected to the pelvis. This is your thigh bone and it runs a long ways. It's a very long bone that's going to go from your hips down into your kneecap. So there's going to be one bone here. We're going to clone this and then we're going to have our lower leg. Now, don't be distressed if it looks like the bones here, if you're using this bone system are like sort of like veering off the body. Um, that's okay, because like I said, this is just a way of viewing the bones. Like if we go back to our display and then we go to stick, then suddenly the bones look a lot more correct. Now, are they, should they be this far up in the leg? Yeah, maybe not. And then we're going to create the foot. Now you'll see we actually need our ankles to be lower here. Now the foot happens in two separate bones. Now, I'll explain what's going on here. So you might think we need to make a bunch of toe bones. However, you're gonna run into problems. For one, that many bones, it's hard to manage. You'll see when we start doing stuff with the fingers, this is actually very difficult. So what we wanna do is just sort of like make something out here that sort of like extends to the end of the foot, but it's maybe just like through a middle toe or something. 
We're gonna do the head. The head's actually very easy to do. And from the neck, we can have a head. And the head can just go up to the top here. Now when you're done, your character should look something like this. And your bones should all exist in a hierarchy. Here are all the bones I made and what I named them. So now we can generate some weights. What we have here, um, we want to have things selected. I believe we want it so that the bones are active. So the active one is the yellow one and the selected is the red. Now you're going to press Command P to bring up the parent menu. And then you're going to select Armature Deform with Automatic Weights. Now it's time to test the rig. Press Control Tab to get into pose mode. We want to grab each bone and move it around. Now if something isn't working here, it's likely because it has bad weight painting. I found I had to fix a lot of things with our default weight paint. We'll figure that out in another tutorial. For now, let's just make sure that it's not completely broken. Next time in the series, we'll get back into Blender and mess with our weight painting before moving forwards.